Each row or item, if you will, in the X grid has its own identifier. We've put it into something called H. We've beaten that concept to death, frankly, uh, and I've talked about it a lot. But one thing that it's missing is it doesn't have the row number for the values inside of Excel. What that means is if I were to think that this is always going to be row one, and then I, let's say, I sort it by last name, and I sort it a couple different ways by first name and then last name like this, then I change the very top item and or the bottom item. Let's say the bottom item used to be Cindy Lou Who, but now it's Bob Baker. Let's say I change the last name to something else, and I make an edit. If I always had that assigned area, uh, the third item, well, if you go to the sample data, the third item is not Bob Baker. It's Cindy Lou Who. So then it would change, and it would ruin everything. My point is that what we want to do now is we want to take the row number from Excel and put that into our grid here. But we don't want people to have to see it. We don't want it to look ugly with these random row numbers. So I'm going to show you how to hide and embed the row number into each of these items, into each of these rows, so that later, whenever you want to edit something and send that information right back to the original row that it came from, even if you have things sorted, it'll know what row it needs to send that back to. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to hit Alt F11. I don't want to ruin this rows from Excel macro, so what I want to do is just copy it and paste it in just a moment at right below. So now we'll paste it and give it a unique name. So in this case, I'm going to rename this new copied version. I'm going to call it Add Excel Rows That Are Hidden. Add Excel Rows Hidden is the name of mine. So it's not going to be that different. We're still going to clear all the columns. We can, and then we're going to still going to add all the columns here. However, right before we add the first name column, we're going to add a hidden one. And I'm going to show you how that you can add a new column and also make changes to that column at the same time. So what I mean is I'm going to do another with end with statement. So I'm going to say with dot add so with you know sheet one grid one columns dot add and I'm gonna say uh, I'll just call this column the row or the Excel rows but with that and I'm gonna say end with up tab key so now I can actually add commands to that uh, column that I've just added for example I want to say that column that I just added dot visible equals false, meaning that it's hidden. I'm going to make a little comment right there that it's hidden. So now we've added a new column, column 0, and that means this is going to be column 1, 2, 3, and 4 instead of 0, 1, 2, 3. All right. So, and then we're going to be able to use that new column 0, the one that's going to take the Excel row, and we're going to be able to utilize that later. So all we have to do here is instead of saying the add item, you know, that we're going to get the value of H from, instead of adding something from sheet 3 in that particular cell, we're actually just going to take the row number, which happens to be X, the value of X. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this really quick. I'm going to hit delete. And what I want to do, I want to add the item of the value of X. The only problem is X is going to be numeric. And sometimes it gets weird whenever you add an item or a column uh, that it's expecting sometimes to be a string. So I like to convert this to a string using the CSTR function. It doesn't matter if it's capital or not. So we're going to convert, convert this to a string using the CSTR function. All right. And that way it won't be a number two or number three or number four. It'll be the text string two, three, four. Trust me, it'll save you a little bit of heartache if you try that. Then all we have to do is, okay, we have the row uh, trapped and we have the item identifier for that row. Okay. But we have the Excel row right here. Uh, but since column zero is going to be invisible, nobody will ever be any of the wiser. Next, all we have to do is fix these column layouts. So since we added another row at the beginning, it kind of bumps these column numbers up a little bit. All right. So the new column one is actually going to be 
the, what we see as the column one. Remember, column zero is the row that's invisible, and then one is going to be first. Wow, that's easy because one on Excel, column one on Excel is first. So now the columns are kind of aligned. So column two, we're getting from Excel's column two. Column three is coming from Excel's column three. And then just copy and paste this, and four is going to be from four. So it's super easy now. Just remember there is a column zero that has the row. Um, and then, you know, we don't even need to really auto resize this other than one time per session. So really that we could leave it there. It doesn't matter. So now let's go ahead and rerun this. And it looks the same, doesn't it? But the only difference is that this is now column one instead of column zero because column zero is invisible. Now we'll see how to manipulate that and exactly how that's going to work in our favor, especially as we're wanting to edit in the very near future. So in the next lecture, we're going to talk about the edit modes. Particularly, we're going to focus on the string edit mode, but we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other types in just a little bit. So we'll see you in the next lecture. Let's dive in.